says she's running away. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a DIY channel tufting headboard. I am doing this for my master bedroom. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add the adhesive to the ply board. This is a half inch ply board. I got my board from Home Depot and I also got them to cut all my boards to the sizes that I need. So I have a headboard in my room that I also DIY'd over five years ago. And I think it's time for an upgrade. I have been changing up a lot of things in my home because my design style have changed. And since it has changed, um, I think it's time to upgrade the headboard as well. Here I am adding adhesive to the foam. And I already, as you see, I already added it to the ply. Now, when using adhesive, you should be in a ventilated area. However, I'm inside in my living room, what I, my dining room, sorry. What I did do is I opened up the windows and I put the, put the fan on so that it can help to push the scent out the house. The garage was pretty hot and stuffy feeling. So I, you know, I didn't want to work out there. I know I would not have completed this entire project in one day if I did go into the garage because the heat would have just chased me out actually. Okay. Now, what um, you have to make sure before putting the foam down is that it's lined up properly because after you stick it, after you let it touch the board, it kind of starts to grab on real quick. And remember to get those sides because you're joining two boards, two foams together, sorry, and you need the sides to also stick. The purpose of doing this um, process is you don't want your foam to be moving around when you start your tufting. And I also have to cut this, so you definitely want to um, stick this down before you start doing all of that. What I'm doing is I'm ensuring that all of the joints are you know meeting and you know there are no high and lows so i'm pulling it apart and then letting it sit back by itself so i had to add an extra um inch to an inch and a half foam on the end i hated that i had to do that but um you know i'm adding it and it's going to work out in the end in any case so what i am using is a very sharp knife to cut the foam and trying to keep my edges neat and everything. So I am trimming the sides. Because this piece was such a small piece to be added, I had to use some tape to hold the seams together until it kind of dries. And then I'll remove the tape once I start to do the upholstery. Now the neater you cut your foam, the better your headboard is going to look. If it's not neat, you're gonna end up with a headboard that looks not neat. So try to take your time if you do try this and make sure that you're, you know, everything that you're doing, you take your time and get it done right so that you'll end up with a good proce process. Now, what I'm doing is I am measuring where each tufting is going to be. My board is 75 inches wide. So what I did is I, did my tuftings 10 inches apart and I was left with five inches. So I had to decide what I'm gonna do with this five inches. Am I gonna increase the 10 or not? What I decided to do was split my five inches in half. So each end has a, will have an ending tufting of two and a half inches on each end. So after I decided to do the two and a half inches, you measure the two and a half inches on each end and then you start to measure your 10 inches to go across. I am putting in the lines on the foam so that when I start to cut, um, when I start to cut th those lines, it's easier for me to cut. I can see what's going on. I'm using a red um, marker to do that. 
And again, you have to be very precise when doing this. If you cut a crooked line, when you do your tufting, it will be crooked. So take your time, do this part. The preparation is key. I am using my ruler as a guide to do these cuts. And again, um, when I cut, I am cutting all the way through. This is a two inch foam. I am cutting all the way through to the board. So my tufting is gonna be two inches in depth. Now, for this, um, don't do what I just did. What I just did is I started from an end. Anytime you're doing any type of an upholstery, you always wanna try to start from the middle. Okay, so I should have started from the middle. The reason for that, if you start from the middle and then go out on each end, you keep your fabric in place. The way I, I started just now, when I get up to the, the end of this, my fabric is gonna be kind of off. Good enough that I had enough fabric hanging over to where it um, kind of didn't matter. But if I had to go further, I would have ran out of fabric on one side and I would not have been able to turn it over. So basically what you have to do is put, I put one hand underneath to find where my cut is. And then I use the other hand to push the fabric down between each cut. So you want to stretch your fabric as you go. You're pulling it tight as you go. So you can see where my first two tufting, I did not do the two and a half inch on that side because I felt like um, I needed to let it dry a little bit more still before I remove the tape. And um, so I'm not worried that those first two has wrinkles. The fabric is still wrinkled and needs to be fixed. But um, I have to go back and fix that in any case. So you saw this one, I started in the middle. She is so late. <laughs> she is so late. But yeah, always start in the centers and come out. Even when you're stapling, you start in the center of a tufting or the center of your piece and then go the opposite direction. See, I'm now realizing that, hey, this fabric might be a little too short, but I pulled it down. I saw that I had enough to bend it under so I don't have to start over. If I had to start over, it's no problem because again, this is all freehand. There's nothing holding that tufting in place right now. What's gonna hold it in place is when I start to do my pleating. So now I am fixing the first two. And that's why I love this particular technique is that if you have errors, you don't have to go remove any staples or anything. You can just go and fix it and be fine because the fabric is temporarily in place. I love this technique. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, this one is the easiest way that does not require any sewing. There's another technique that you can use where you could have sewn that two inches, put a thread in between, and um, then pull them down in place and then you know, you'd have stapled the thread in place. This is the easiest way. I am using my ruler to ensure that all my fabric is all the way down where I need it to be and is as tight as I can get it. I also use a twine when um, I was first doing it. I used the twine to try to pull it down and then I was like, hey, let me use the ruler to make sure everything is straight. So here, what I am going to do now is I am going to lock each one of my channel tufting that I um, that I just did with my hand. So my first staple is going to go in the center of that 10 inches. You just gauge where your center is at basically. And then you can start to do your pleating. Now, when you're doing your pleating, ensure, please ensure if you want your stuff to look neat, that all of your pleats are facing the same direction that is key 
to making your channel tufting look neat and precise. So you see how I am pulling and folding that pleat? That is what is going to lock my tufting in place and it will not, that fabric will not come out of where you pushed it in. It will not move. Trust me guys. I know a little bit of upholstery. I've been doing it for a few years for myself. And I know a little bit of tricks here and there. This tufting is not going to move. So you want to take your hand and kind of smooth it over the edge so that you won't have like a, let's say a square edge like. I wanted my edges to be kind of smooth. So um, if I'm doing it, if I'm smoothing it over with my hand like that and pulling the fabric nice and tight, the end of the foam that's like a sharp edge, that will smooth over when you're doing that. So that's the purpose of me running my hand over and pulling on the fabric at the same time. Not too tight. You have to make sure that you're using the same tension at all times so that each tufting will look the same. So guys, I have had several staplers over the years and they've all been manual ones. Those manual ones, every time I would think that I have to go and use that, I would have to think so hard before I go do the piece I'm doing. Or sometimes I even change up the piece I'm doing because I don't want to deal with that manual staple, stapler and um, the way, you know, it hurts the hand sometimes. So I have this electrical one. And what is even better is the air one. I want to get me an air one, but I haven't done that yet because I don't do as, as much upholstery like I used to. As you can see, I am pulling on this pretty tight and the fabric is not coming from between um, where I pushed it down. So after I put in these few staples here and there, what I am going to do is I am going to flip the piece over and then enforce um, all the areas that needs to be stapled as well as finish off all my edges. And one thing you're going to have to do when you're finished is remove, you know, cut away all the excess fabric. Again, this is all about making your piece neat. Yes, you will not see this. It will be against the wall because I'm mounting this on the wall. but. You know, you still don't want when you're mounting it, you have something feel like it's pushing it off of the wall. So I'm cutting away some of the excess fabric on the corner so that when I make my pleat, it, it's flat. So here I am going in and I am going to put fab, I'm going to put staples, um, where, because remember when I had it the other side, I was putting like one staple here, there to just keep the fabric in place so I can do my pleats. And now that I've finished that, I can turn it over and I can add more staples. As everyone know, when you're doing upholstery, you use a lot of staples.
And that's why I was saying I would love to get me an ear um, gun, an ear stapler. Because normally, like, the staples will, like, go in. Sometimes, you know, if you don't put enough force, they will um, not go in. You have to use the hammer to help you out. So for this end, you see I had to cut the fabric so that I can, you know, get it to lay flatter. And then I'll remove that excess when I'm cutting around the board. So here is the finished headboard. Do you see how neat that looks? And the fabric, I wish you guys could see this fabric. This fabric is so freaking gorgeous. I'm so in love with it. It's a rich loom performance fabric i think in my other video i said p kaufman because i was looking at one from p kaufman but it's not p kaufman it's actually rich loom and i use six yards of this fabric i use three yards on the headboard and the other three yards was used on the base which i'm doing now and the two sideboards So I am doing the base right now. And as you can see, I've learned my lesson. I knew better. I don't know why I didn't do that. But I am starting from the middle. So the height of this is actually 18 inches. So this is the part that would sit in front of the bed. I really like doing this one because it was not as long as the headboard. Like I, I could have done 10 of these and be happy. <laughs> I could reach across. It just, you know, it was like easier to do because, you know, I can reach across. I don't have to be run from one side to the other. Um, yeah. So baby Zyla is, I have, I put some, she brought me some banana earlier. I opened a banana, I put it in a bowl for her and I, the bowl is right there on the floor. She had two pieces left in it and she goes and bring another batch of banana for me to put it in. I'm like, girl, you better go eat what you have. <laughs> so here guys, I read, this is why I don't like cutting my fabric before i'm finished i like to cut it at the end so i ran out of fabric when i got to the end but i'm doing channel tufting so i it's, i don't have to sew or anything i just cut another piece of fabric and i add it in there and it's going to be fine because when i pleat it it's going to keep it in place Now, channel tufting is one of the tough things that is very modern and contemporary. Um, if you're looking for those clean lines and you want a tufted piece, um, I would say go for this. My sofas have the channel tufting um, in it. Normally, uh, like if you can see my dining room chairs, those chairs that type of tufting this is not as deep as it you know it would make it too traditional this is still contemporary because the tuftings are not as deep it doesn't have um those extra folds and stuff like that that would make it look real traditional but if you want that real modern clean look try channel tufting And here is the finished piece. Now what I am doing is I am making my sideboards. For my sideboards, I am not using any foam. 
I am using batten only because I don't want the sideboards to be thick. So I am only using the batten. So I am going to cut some, cut the batten to the size, leaving enough um, space for it to be able to fold under the wood. The, the sideboards are 10 inches in height. I only wanted them to cover my um, foundation, the foundation of my bed. This piece will be mounted on legs. I did order chrome legs that matches my sofa. I ordered those from Amazon. I will leave the links in the description for you if you're interested in those. As you can see guys, um, I'm on my dining room table and I added a um, piece of cloth to protect my table. So here are all my pieces. It's uh, four pieces in total, two sideboards, my front um, piece and my headboard. Okay, I took everything to the room and what I am doing now is I am adding the black backing to the piece. The, this is like very important because it is um, a bed and when you're you know making your bed you don't want when you're making your bed that you push your hand in there and you probably you know snag on a staple that probably was kind of loose or whatever so you want and plus it gives it a nice finished look when your eyes you know happen to look down there you're seeing a finished product so when you're putting the back on you want to put it on like you just saw i had it flip and i was nail stapling the edges on first and then i flip it over so that's going to be my top so the top part you will not see any staples at all because i flipped it over where the staples are going to be is to the bottom and i can't see why anything should reach all the way down there that's like almost to the floor okay so that's how you add this and on your ends, you want to fold it in and um, staple it in place. So these staples you will see. And I don't use a lot of staples when I'm doing this part of it. And then I am, um, you know, you start from the middle. As you can see, I start from the middle when I was stapling. And that will keep your fabric nice and straight. So here I am at the middle. And I am stapling like right to the end because I'm covering all that fabric that you saw beneath. Okay, so I've done them all and now I added the L brackets. I got these L brackets from Home Depot. And I'm at the L brackets to those. So we now what we did is we took the old headboard down and we mounted the new one. So the new one is connected to those mirror pieces. And um, then we have cleats on the wall and we put it up there. So what I'm going to do right now is do a quick clean with me. Put my room together so that you can see my headboard with my clean room finished. Now my son helped me put the headboard on the wall and he helped me put the base of it together. Um, what I forgot to do is for him to help me remove the skirt from my foundation. This mattress is heavy and homegirl is not trying to lift it. So um, when he is available again, I will have him help me remove the skirt from my foundation of my bed. So guys, this was a satisfying project. Very satisfying. The bed looks gorgeous in my room. It looked like a whole new piece. It is customized to Jag by Design. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this type of bed before, but never, never with the mirrored sideboard. This is what I'm talking about when you custom something to make it your own. Change something about it where it will become your original piece. And as a designer, that's like always 
forefront in my mind? How do I make this piece my own? Guys, I want to say thank you for watching. Enjoy me putting my room back together. And I will see you guys on my next upload. And have a good one.